Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dark on Duels, and Tim, and we'll be doing a Phantom Knight deck profile. So I'm really excited for this one because Phantom Knights are one of my favorite archetypes. This deck is absolutely insane, especially now that we can actually summon Dark Requiem XYZ Dragon, which is amazing that we actually can do that again because of the Phantom Knights of Rank of Magic launch getting unlimited, which is awesome. I know it was hit, it was taken off the list a little while back, and it would since the last deck profile, but it's still awesome that we can play this card again. So, without further ado, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on the screen, come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon because we have some awesome rewards for you guys, like getting a signed card, getting your name description of every single video, or even getting you requested deck profile every single month that you are a patron. So, let's get straight on into this, guys, and definitely give us a like for that awesome first ed ghost rare. Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. So let's get into this, guys. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak. So Phantom Knight of Ancient Cloak is a really neat card in this deck because it has the ability that if this card's in attack position, you can target a dark monster on the field and change this card to defense. And if you do, that monster gains 800 attack which is a good effect to be able to normal summon this card and immediately give another monster 800 attack. And it also has the ability that you can manage this card from your graveyard and then add a Phantom Knight monster from your deck to your hand, or a Phantom Knight card from your deck to your hand, which could be Fog Blade, it could be a copy of your Silent Booties, it could be a Ragged Gloves, anything that you need, this card can get it for you. Then we play three copies of the Silent Booties. I know it's called Silent Boots, but I always call it Booties because I think it's cute. But basically what this card does is if you control a Phantom Knight monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, and then if if you do, you can only special summon it once per turn this way. And then you can also manage this card from your graveyard to add a Phantom Knight Speller Trap from your deck to your hand. Then we play two copies of Ragged Gloves. Ragged Gloves is pretty good because it can make your uh, Break Sword go up to 3,000 when you summon it. This card also has the ability that you can manage it from the graveyard to send a Phantom Knight card from your deck to your graveyard, which can help you thin the deck just a little bit by sending a copy of one of your Ancient Cloak or Silent Boost to the graveyard to be able to banish them to be able to search another card. So that's pretty much it for the Phantom Knight monsters. For the other additional cards we're playing, we're playing a pseudo Phantom Knight monster, which is Kagamucha Knight. Uh, Kagamucha Knight is a really good card in this deck because when you normal summon a level 3 monster, you can special summon this card from your hand, but it can't be used as Synchro Material, which is not that big of a deal because we're not going to use this card for Synchro Material anyways. We do play Synchro Monsters in here, which is just a little spoiler, but you really don't need this card for that. You have plenty of other cards in the deck to be able to go into those other plays. Then we play a single copy of Dark Greffer because it helps you send your cards to Graveyard, and being able to discard a Phantom Knight to the Graveyard and then be able to special summon this card from your hand with a copy of like Malicious that you're going to be banishing is really good to be able to do that. One copy of Armageddon Knight. You normal summon the Armageddon Knight and it sends something to Graveyard that's a dark monster, which could be literally a Armageddon, or it could be a copy of your Destiny Hero Malicious, or it could be one of the other cards that we play in this deck that can really help out, one of your Phantom Knights. Let me play two copies of Destiny Hero Malicious. The two Destiny Hero Malicious are basically here for Link Fodder, that you're going to be using these cards for Link Fodder with sending them to the Graveyard with Destiny, or with your Armageddon Knight or Dark Greffer. It's very rare that you draw two of these at the same time, so that's why I play them at two. Let me play two copies of Plague Spreader Zombie. Plague Spreader Zombie helps us synchro a little bit because it's really good to synchro in a Phantom Knight deck because you can use this with the Destiny Hero Malicious to go into a level 8 synchro monster like a copy of Beals or a little bit of stuff like that, which gives us a little bit more utility with a copy of Fog Blade in the back row where the Beals on the field can really, really help out. Then we play my favorite, per my personal favorite card of all time. You guys know what's coming. We play... Three Dark Arm Dragons. Yes, we do. Why do I play three Dark Arm Dragons? Look at that monster lineup, okay? With that kind of monster lineup, it's really easy to get cards out of the graveyard. All of these banish themselves. These banish themselves, or get them out themselves out of the graveyard. The only ones that don't is these four and the Dark Arm Dragons themselves. You can summon multiple Dark Arm Dragons in this deck at the same turn if you draw multiple copies of them. It's really easy to summon, and it's really easy to get them out of your hand if you don't want them. Like with a copy of Super Polymerization or Lure of Darkness, and to dig deeper into the deck to either get rid of them or summon them. It depends on what you need. But this card is really good because if you end your turn or you get to the end of your combo and you have cards, you have this one last card in your hand and your opponent's going, oh, I've, I've outwitted them. I don't, they don't have anything to extend. And then you drop Dark Arm Dragon on them, banish your Armageddon Knight, banish your Kagamusha Knight, banish your second Plague Spreader, and then pop their field and they're like, ooh, I just lost. This card is insane and that's why I love this card so much is because it wipes games. It cleans up games. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to be playing a single copy of Foolish Burial because everything in this deck likes to go to the graveyard for some reason. Uh, maybe they have a summer home there. 
one copy of Rhoda because everything's a warrior just about in this deck except for Plague Spreader and your copy of Dark Arm Dragon. Two copies of the Phantom Knights of Rank Up Magic Launch. Uh, the Phantom Knights Rank Up Magic Launch is essentially just here so you can go into the copy of your Dark Requiem XYZ Dragon. That's the big reason that you play this because it's super, super easy to go into that card. It's ridiculously easy to go in that card and it's such a good card. Three copies of Allure of Darkness. The Allure of Darkness, the entire deck is dark, so why wouldn't you play this? It's just such a good card to be able to just go in and be like, hey, uh, I'm drawing two and banishing a card from my hand. And it doesn't matter which one I do because they were, you know, it, I have plenty more. Uh, three copies of Call by the Gray because you don't want to deal with your opponent's hand traps at all. And then three copies of Super Poly because the entire deck goes, hey, you want to use one of my monsters as a fusion material? That's fine. If I want to fusion summon one of your dark monsters and one of my dark monsters in a rare situation and I don't use both of yours, um, that's fine. If I send Cloak to Graveyard, I'm going to get a search. If I send Boots to the Graveyard, I'm going to get a search. If I send a Bragged Gloves to the Graveyard, hey, guess what? I'm going to get a send a Graveyard. Then I'm going to get a search. So it doesn't really matter if you do. You can get an awesome Starving and Infusion Dragon out from the deck or from your extra deck on your side of the field with this card, which is why I play this card at three. So that's it for the spells. Let's get into those traps. So for the traps, we're going to be playing some really interesting ones. I'm only playing a single copy of the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine. Shade Brigadine is a one of for me because it has it's a level four monster when you summon it, which to me is not great in this deck. Yes, you can use it as link fodder. It's really good in a lot of decks because if it's the only trap in your graveyard, then you can just immediately activate it and get a level four monster. I have plenty of other cards to do that. When I was playing the level or link three a uh, Phantom Knight monster, yes, I could see this card at three. But nowadays, in Phantom Knights, one is plenty because you special summon it, and then once you do, it just goes to grave. It's a one of to me, and it's searchable. One copy of the Phantom Knight Wings. Phantom Knight Wings lets you target a face up monster on the field and it gains 500 attack. And also for the rest of the turn, it can't be destroyed by battle. Um, or the first time it would be destroyed by battle or by card effect this turn it is not destroyed. And then you can manage to scarf in your graveyard to target a Phantom Knight monster in your grave and immediately special summon it back out of the grave. One copy of Sword. Basically, you target a monster, and then that monster gains 800 attack, which is really cool. You manage from the graveyard, and then if you do, you get to target a Phantom Knight monster in your grave and special summon it. Two copies of the Phantom Knights of Mist Claws. Not Santa Claus, but Mist Claws. Mist Claws is really cool. I really like what this card does. It lets you target one of your banished Phantom Knight monsters and add it back to your hand, which can help you recycle your resources. And then it also has the ability that when an opponent's monster declares a direct attack, while this card's in your grave, you can target a level four or lower Phantom Knight monster in your grave and special summon that monster. And if you do, you special summon this card as a normal monster with the same original level as that monster, and then it, with a 0-0. Zero, zero. So basically, it prevents your opponent for two attacks from OTKing you if you activate this card. In first turn, you're probably going to have a Banished Phantom Knight, so this card is usually never dead. And then for the best trap card in the entire deck, we play three copies of the Phantom Knight of Fogblade. Fogblade is absolutely insane. It's like Phoenix Chains on diesel fuel, which is amazing, because it lets you activate this card, and then you target a monster on your field, and then that monster cannot be attacked, and it basically negates its effect. This card is searchable, which is extremely good. It also has the ability that you can banish from the graveyard to special summon a Phantom Knight monster, um from your graveyard, which is really good too, because if the monster that's destroyed by this card, you just immediately get a monster from the graveyard, which is nice. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. The extra deck is really, really fun to play in here, because what you're going to be playing is the first edition Ghost Rare Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. That card is insane, but if you guys don't know what this card does, it is one of the most iconic XYZ monsters in the entire game. You detach two materials from this card, target a monster your opponent controls, half its attack, and then this card gains the attack that that monster lost, which is awesome. One copy of Dark Requiem XYZ Dragon, which is the upgraded version of Dark Rebellion. Dark Rebellion is, or Dark Requiem's effect is, is if this card has Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon as a material, it gains the following effects. That once per turn, you can detach a material from this card, 
and then you target a face of monster your opponent controls and attack becomes zero and then this card gains the original attack of the opponent's monster. This card can one card OTK your opponent, which is insane. It also has the ability that during either player's turn, when your opponent activates an effect, you can detach your material from this card, negate the activation if you do destroy it. Then you can special summon an XYZ monster from your graveyard, which can be your Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon, which is really good. Two copies of Break Sword. This card lets you pop a card on your side of the field and your opponent's side of the field. And if it's popped on your side of the field, then you get to target two Phantom Knight monsters with the same level in your graveyard and increase their level by one and then special summon them. Which is really cool to be able to do because then you can overlay the two level fours into Dark Rebellion and then go Dark Rebellion uh, with into Dark Requiem. If you know that you can go Break Sword and then you go into this and then you immediately rank it up and then go into the Dark Requiem. One copy of Levenair, the Sea Dragon, because you banish so much in this deck, it's super easy to summon this card, and so you play this card at one. One copy of my Topologic Zero Boros. Topologic Zero Boros is one of the boss monsters that I consider this deck besides the Dark Requiem. Basically what this card does is for every banished card on the in the graveyard, or every banished card, not in the graveyard, but every banished card, this card gains 200 attack. You banish a lot of cards in this deck. When your opponent... Special summons, or you special summon a monster to a link zone that this card points to, then you banish every single card that's face up on the field. This card is insane. You could change this card out for a um, Boral Sword or Boral Load if you want to go that route, but I really like Zero Boros in here. Unicorn because it bounces cards. Phoenix because it pops spells and traps. One copy of Wee Witch because Wee Witch increases the attack of dark monsters by 500, which the majority of the stuff we're playing is dark. Predaplant, Verte, Anaconda, because it's a super poly, just like, super poly with no legs, essentially. It's a snake. It doesn't have legs, silly. One copy of Beals of the Diabolic Dragons. Beals is really good in here because it's really easy to summon, and with Fog Blade, this card is basically invincible. I mean, your opponent already, like, you're going to be negating stuff on your opponent's side of the field, and then this card is like the sword that you're going to keep poking them with, and then you're able to pop stuff with Break Sword. It's just so hard to deal with this deck once it gets going. One copy of Borload Savage because you can basically summon this card off of a Plague Spreader. It's really easy to summon this card off Plague Spreader. And then you can just equip it with any of your Link Monsters. One copy of High Spread Roid Chambara. Chambara is just a Plague Spreader plus any of your level 3 monsters besides the... Um, Kagamusha Knight, because it can be used as Synchro Material. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon, because it's a super poly target, and same thing with Mud Dragon. So, being able to summon two Dimension Dragons is really cool in a single deck. So, with, that's it for the deck, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Definitely tell me what your favorite Dimension Dragon is down in the comments down below between Odd Eyes, Clear Wing, Crystal Wing, or Clear Wing, uh, Dark Rebellion, or Starving It was Starving Venom. Dark Rebellion, Clear Wing, and Odd Eyes was the three. And Zark is technically the fifth one. So definitely tell me what you guys like in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And definitely hit that subscribe button and the notification button down there so you guys can get all the latest videos from Dark Arm Duelist. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And check out that Patreon as well. See you later, guys.